What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, May 23rd, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and I'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. The weekend and Adele had a big night at the Billboard Music Awards. The singers collected several awards at the show held at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. The weekend won eight awards while Adele was named top artist among her honors. In addition, Britney Spears received the Millennium Award, while Celine Dion was honored with the Icon Award. Little Chris and Sierra hosted the show. Billboard Music Award finalists are based on key fan interactions with music, including album and digital song sales, radio airplay, streaming, touring, and social interactions on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, and other popular online destinations for music. These measurements are tracked year-round by Billboard and its data partners, including Nielsen Music and Next Big Sound. Adele won Top Artist Award, while Fetty Wap won Top New Artist, Justin Bieber won Top Male Artist, Adele won Top Female Artist, One Direction won Top Duo Group Award, Adele won the Top Billboard 200 Artist Award, The Weeknd won Top Hot 100 Artist, The Weeknd also won Top Song Sales Artist Award, and the Top Radio Songs Artist Award, and also the Top Streaming Songs Artist Award. Justin Bieber won Top Social Media Artist Award, Taylor Swift won Top Touring Artist Award, The Weeknd won Top R&B Artist Award, Drake won Top Rap Artist Award, Luke Bryan won Top Country Artist Award, 21 Pilots won Top Rock Artist Award. Top Dance Electronic Artist Award went to David Guetta. Adele's 25 won Top Billboard 200 Albums Award, while Pitch Perfect 2 won Top Soundtrack Award. The Weeknd's Behind, Beauty Behind the Madness won Top R&B Award, while Meek Mill's Dream Worth More Than Money won Top Rap Award. Chris Stapleton's Traveler won Top Country Award, and 21 Pilots' Blurry Face won Top Rock Album Award. Zed's True Colors won Top Dance Electronic Album. See You Again by Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Poop won Top Hot 100 Song Award. Adele's Hello won Top Selling Song Award. Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon won Top Radio Song Award. Top Streaming Song Audio went to The Weeknd for The Hills. Top Streaming Song went to, with Salento with Watch Me. Top R&B Song went to The Weeknd's The Hills. Top Rap Song went to See You Again by Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Poof. Top Country Song went to Thomas Wright with Die a Happy Man. Top Rock Song went to Walk the Moon with Shut Up and Dance. Top Dance Electronic Song went to Major Lazar and DJ Snake featuring M.O. with Lean On. And the Billboard Chart Achievement went to Rihanna. The stadium turned purple before Madonna appeared on stage at Sunday's Billboard Music Awards, sitting in a purple throne and leaning on a purple cane as she sang the lyrics to Prince's Nothing Compares to You. The pop icon paid tribute to the late Prince as she sang the song, which was written and composed by Prince and later made famous by Sinead O'Connor, while powerful images flashed on the wall behind her, including many of the late singers during memorable performances. Towards the end of the moving rendition, Stevie Wonder joined Madonna on stage wearing a purple scarf. After a rapturous applause, the pair led the audience in an a cappella version of Purple Rain. Such stars as Rihanna and The Weeknd were spotted singing along, while others like Rebecca Romain were seen in tears. Wonder said in mid-song, Prince, we know we love you forever. Wonder and Madonna, who wore a purple suit, encouraged the audience to clap along as they belted out the remaining lyrics. Madonna closed the show by saying, Thank you, Prince Rogers Nelson, for all that you have given us. Madonna and Prince collaborated for Love Song, which was part of her 1989 album, Like a Prayer. Kesha return to the music world continued Sunday night with her soulful performance of the Bob Dylan classic It Ain't Mean Babe at the Billboard Music Awards. After making a surprise appearance at Coachella and ending her record sta- uh, recording status by releasing a single with Zed, Kesha expanded her musical horizons with a tribute to one of her favorite songwriters accompanied by Ben Foltz on the piano. Initially garnering fame through such songs as TikTok and Blah Blah Blah, Kesha has spent her 
returned, shedding her party girl image amid her attempts to get out of her contract with her longtime producer, Dr. Luke, whom she has accused of abuse. Dr. Luke's Sony-based label, Kimosabi Records, has revoked their permission for Kesha to perform at the Billboard Music Awards earlier last week, but later approved the appearance after Kesha promised that the performance would not be used to make a statement against Dr. Luke. After showing up on the red carpet in a purple suit and tie, not unlike the sort that Prince would wear on stage, she donned a white coat adorned with hearts, rainbows, and stars for a tender performance of It Ain't Me, Babe. Adele on Sunday released a psychedelic video for her new single, Send My Love to Your New Lover, moments after winning top award, uh, top album award at the Billboard Music Awards. The track is off her BMA winning award 25, which has produced a string of hits for the British singer. The clip features Adele singing in a flowing and flowery dress before a black, black, uh, background with her movements capturing a kind of styles stop motion that suggests a 70s tie-dye effect. Hello, the first song off of 25 became the first song in history to sell more than 1 million digital copies in a single week. Jennifer Lawrence is still unsure whether or not she will be returning to Fox's X-Men franchise following the release of X-Men Apocalypse. The actress, whose three-picture contract with the studio expires with Apocalypse, along with uh, co-stars James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, and Nicholas Holt, spoke with Entertainment Weekly Friday about how, if one decides to leave, they will, will all. Uh, she explained, Fassbender and McAvoy and I were talking. Will you come back? I don't know. I'll come back if you come back. Fox should be terrified because the deal we made was like, if one of us doesn't come back, none of us are. Still, Lawrence noted that she is open to stay with the series as Mutant Mystique as she's done since 2011's X-Men First Class. She said, I would love to come back. I love the fans and I love the character. But then you realize how important your year is, like how important three months out of your year is. I don't know. I shouldn't be that honest. In April, the 25-year-old shared a similar set. Mintz proclaimed, I am dying to come back. I love these movies. I love being in them. I love ensemble movies because it's not on anyone's shoulders. Should Lawrence and her fellow co-stars decide to return, the next film in the X-Men series will take place in the 90s, according to producer and screenwriter Simon Kinberg. Apocalypse opens in theaters May 27th and features the last of the X-Men remaining from Days of Future Past, including leader Professor X, played by Mac Foy, Mystique, played by Lawrence, and Beast, played by Holt, as Herb's only defense as they accompany a team of rookie heroes, including Cyclops, played by Ty Sheridan, Jean Grey, played by Sophie Turner, Quicksilver, played by Evan Peters, and Nightcrawler, played by Cody Smith McPhee, in order to take on the all-powerful Apocalypse, played by Oscar Isaac, and his four horsemen, Magneto, played by Fassbender, Psylocke, played by Olivia Munn, Storm, played by Alexander Ship, and Angel, played by Ben Hardy. Michael Keaton has rejoined Spider-Man Homecoming after initial negotiations reportedly fell through last month. The former Batman actor, who most recently spoofed himself in the Oscar-nominated film Birdman, will reportedly play the film's villain alongside Tom Holland's Spider-Man character and Robert Downey Jr., who is reprising his role as Tony Stark. Amy Pascal and Kevin Feige of Marvel are reportedly producing the superhero re reboot less than two years after Mark Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man 2, starring Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield in a titular role. In Homecoming, Marissa Tomei will play Aunt May, and actor Zendaya will play the female lead. The cast also includes Tony Rivoli and Laura Hare. San Diego's Comic-Con has announced it will host the world premiere of the eagerly awaited sci-fi adventure Star Trek Beyond, starring John Cho, Simon Pegg, Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Zoe Zeldana, Carl Urban, Antoine Yelchin, and Idris Elba. The film will debut in IMAX July 20th at the Embarcadero Marina Park. The movie will include appearances by the movie's cast and crew, as well as a live concert performance by the San Diego Symphony Orchestra. Uh, director Justin Lin said in a statement, I am thrilled to celebrate the premiere of the film together with the fans at Comic-Con and excited for everyone there to experience Michael um, Giacchino's incredible score played live. Uh, added David Gansler, the spokesman for Comic-Con International. We're both privileged and excited that Paramount Pictures and Bad Robot have chosen to honor fans by having the world premiere of the next chapter of Star Trek at Comic-Con this summer. The movie is scheduled to open in theaters July 22nd. Kate Blanchett and Jeff Goldblum have joined the cast of Thor Ragnarok. The Marvel announced the 47-year-old actress and 63-year-old actor for the Thor The Dark World sequel Friday, along with Tessa Thompson and Carl Urban. Avengers star Mark Ruffalo is also confirmed for the film. Blanchett will play the new, mysterious, and powerful villain Hela, with Goldberg 
uh, Goldblum as the eccentric uh, grandmaster. Thompson and Urban will portray Valkyrie and Surge, while Ruffalo will reprise his role as the Hulk. Uh, Kevin Feige said in a statement, the continuation of the epic Thor franchise will be powerful and unique, and with the additions of Kate, Jeff, Tessa, Carl, and Mark to the cast, we have the makings of his most dangerous and heroic adventure yet. Uh, He also said the sheer raw talent each of these actors brings to the screen can be quantified. Having any one of them join the Marvel Cinematic Universe would be an honor, and having all of them is incredible. Newcomers will join uh, returning cast stars Chris Hemsworth at at Thor, in addition to Tom Hiddleston as Loki, Idris Elba as Himadol, and Anthony Hopkins as Odin. Allie Portman, who played Jane Foster in the first two films, will not return. In the comics, the Grandmaster is an ancient being who once uh, possessed one of his six Infinity Gems. Valkyrie, meanwhile, is an Asgardian uh, warrior and love interest to Thor, while Scourge is a villain with a double-bladed battle axe. Thor Ragnarok opens in theaters November 3rd, 2017. The first two movies, Thor in 2011 and Thor The Dark World in 2013, earned a combined $1.09 billion at the box office. Scottish actor Ira McGregor is to star as two very different brothers, Emmett and Ray Sussie, in season three of the anthology series Fargo. A Hollywood reporter said Friday McGregor will play both Emmett, the parking lot king of Minnesota, and his loser younger sibling. Production on season three of the crime dramedy is to start later this year. It is expected to premiere on FX in 2017. The fresh episodes are rumored to be set in 2010 after the events that took place in season one. The show's creator, Noah Noah Howley, told The Hollywood Reporter in December, none of the main characters from our first year will be back for our third year. McGregor's films include Transpotting, Black Hawk Down, Moulin Rouge, the Star Wars prequel trilogy, Big Fish, and August Osage County. Will Arnett, Stephen Amell, Laura Lindley, and Tyler Perry attended the premiere of their movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows in New York City, Sunday. Alexander Ambrosio and Carmilla Anthony, who have cameos in the sci-fi action-adventure picture, were also spotted on the red carpet for the screening. Not photographed that the event was the film's pregnant female lead, Megan Fox, whom Paramount Pictures said bowed out of the weekend interviews because she was feeling under the weather and couldn't travel from her California home to Massachusetts. The synopsis accompanying the film's latest trailer says, Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, and Raphael return to theaters this summer to battle bigger, badder villains alongside April O'Neil, played by Megan Fox, Vern Fenwick, played by Will Arnett, and a newcomer. The hockey mask vigilante Casey Jones, played by Stephen Amell. After supervillain Shredder escapes custody, he joins forces with mad scientist Baxter Stockman, played by Tyler Perry, and two dim-witted henchmen, Bebop, played by Gary Anthony Williams, and Rocksteady, played by WWE superstar Sheamus, to unleash a diabolical plan to take over the world. As the Turtles prepare to take on Shredder and his new crew, they find themselves facing even a greater evil with similar intentions than the story The Notorious Crank. The movie is set for release June 3rd. Former Saturday Night Live cast members Fred Armisen, Jason Sudeikis, Maya Rudolph, and Andy Samberg appeared on the season 41 finale of the, set of the sketch comedy series this weekend. Armisen guest hosted the episode and played Sudeikis' insufferable, instantly orgasmic girlfriend in one skit, while Maya Rudolph showed up in the weekend update segment as Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff. Sandberg and current SNL player Vanessa Bayer started in a digitally music video for a raunchy, exploited Phil pop song called Finest Girl, which featured Sandberg as a recording artist Connor For Real and Bayer as a young woman obsessed and sexually aroused by the killing of terror leader Osama Bin Laden. Another highlight of the season's last episode was a spot-on parody of the 1989 movie Dead Poets Society with Armisen replacing the late Robin Williams as an inspirational teacher whose, te- whose teen students protest his unjust firing by standing on their desk. The sketch has a twist, though. As Peter Davidson climbs up, he is hit by a ceiling fan, which decapitates him and sprays his blood all over the classroom. Courtney Barnett provided the finale's musical entertainment. Aaron Paul, Bob Oldenkirk, and Cisco took part in a Super Sweet 60s celebration honoring Brian Cranston, who marked the milestone birthday in March on Jimmy Kimmel Live. The 60-minute video was a send-up to MTV's docuseries My Super Sweet 16, which chronicles various youths over the top bashes. A uh, segment, a message that accompanies the segment on YouTube, which has gotten more than 100,000 views since it was posted Friday. Brian Cranston just had a big birthday. He turned 60 in March, and luckily for us, MTV was there to document the whole thing. 
AEW.com reported Cranston said in the hilarious clip, I swear to God, if my parents made me plan this party like a poor person, I will lose my shit. Uh, my shit will be lost. Bible. Olden Kirk appeared in an outfit changing montage telling Cranston one ensemble made him look like a sleepy refugee and that the hat he selected is too hatty. Paul Olden Kirk and Cranston co starred together on the acclaimed series Breaking Bad. Cisco is the performer Cranston picked to headline his big budget Lion King theme raid. 